day learners this is your favorite program learn at home my name is Haruna Manase Yerima your agri teacher and uh, I'll be taking you in just three, just two work the topic we have today is fishery fishery have you ever seen fish in your life either fresh or dry one. Sometimes your parents replace uh, meat with fish. If you go to nearby markets, <coughs> you can see fish around that, uh, those markets. Then, this is what we want to discuss today in today's lesson. We want to look at uh, the introduction, what we mean by fishery. We discovered that eating fish is part of the cultural tradition of many people, even in Nigeria. In terms of health benefits, it has excellent nutritional value. Fish that we're eating has excellent nutritional value that is added to our body. So that's why you can see demands in fish eating is always in, on the increase. It is a good source of protein, fatty acids, vitamin, mineral, and uh, essential micronutrients. All these ones are needed so that we have a good health. It's part of what constitutes our food. Fish is part of it. Then let's look at the definition of uh, fishery. Fishery by definition refers to the process of rearing and harvesting fishes in a body of water such as pond, lake, stream, river, sea, and ocean. In your house, your parent may decide to make a fish pond. That is, they'll construct a place where they'll put water there and then rear fish in such areas. Sometimes it might not be a, something that they'll build on the ground. It might be a container that will keep and save water there so that they will put fish there. So that any time they need this fish, they can go to that place and harvest the fish and then make use of it. Sometimes we that live around riverine areas or streams, we can go to the stream to harvest this fish. By so doing, you are practicing what we call fishery. Nigeria, okay, fish production is becoming a lucrative job in Nigeria. Most people are engaging into fish production because of the financial benefit that's attached to it, because they can sell and they can as well make use of it. As the demand for fish and fish product, products is our, in our daily uh, diet is increasing daily. Every day we need it to increase into our diet. It's increasing daily. That's why the rearing of fish or the practicing of fishery becomes necessary in Nigeria. Many people are trying to engage into it. This is a morphology of a fish. We want to look at the part of a fish, the morphology. That's the part how fish have been divided. This is an example of a tilapia fish. If you look at it from here, this is the head. The head, and uh, the second part, this one, is called the trunk, then the tail. That's to tell you that a fish can be divided into three parts morphologically. So we're going to consider these parts one by one. The body of fish can be divided, as I've earlier said, into the, the head, the trunk, and the tail. The head consists of the mouth, nostrils, two eyes, and upper column. The mouth, the nostril, the two eyes, and the upper column. The mouth is used both for feeding and for taking in water from where oxygen is extracted. We know that uh, as humans, we need oxygen. So also fish that live in water, they need oxygen. With the oxygen, we uh, extract from the environment we live. Also, fish, because they live in the uh, water environment, 
they extract their oxygen through the, the water that they take in through their mouth. Then, the nostrils are not meant for breathing, but for smelling. The nostrils that the fish has is not meant for breathing just as we humans, we have our own nostrils for breathing. But in, in the case of fish, their own nostril is not for breathing, it is for smelling. That is to smell whether there is food or there is anything close to them that they can eat. That is what they use the nostrils for. Then, the eyes enable the fish to sight food and predators. Is, is, if there is food in the water, it's the eyes that enables them to sight the food and uh, eat it. And the predators, the predators are those th uh, are animals that, can that feed on fish, that can kill them. As soon as they sight them, they will run. Have you ever entered inside water? Have you ever seen fish inside water? Maybe you have seen it coming close to you. As soon as you step into that water, what will happen to the fish? The fish will run. Once the fish has run out, it shows that it, shows that it has seen you using the what? The eyes. So also we, as we are using our eyes to see, they to they use their eyes to see, to dictate predators and the food around them. The upper column or the gill cover, the upper column or the gill cover is the one that houses the gills, which are the respiratory organs of the fish. Yes, the upper column, let's look at the diagram here. If you see these parts here, this one that covers this place is the upper column we're talking about. This place is the upper column or gill cover. If there are some gills inside there that uh, the fish use it for uh, 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 filtering uh, respiration, to, to filter air that will come in, they use it for respiration inside the uh, water. Then, if you look at from here, from the, this place, we say the upper column has covered this place. This is the eye we are talking about. This is the nostrils we are talking about. And this is the mouth we are talking about. Then the trunk. We have seen the head. That's one of the segments. Now we are going to the second segment, which is the trunk. This is the body of the fish. The trunk is the body of the fish. Just as we have seen in the diagram. This place to this place is the trunk. It's the whole body of the fish. That is the trunk we are talking about. Then, it comprises the dorsal and pectoral fins, the lateral line, and the anus. The fins are used for swimming. What enables fish to swim in water is the uh, fins. That's why you see a lot of fins. Let's go back to the diagram again. Lot of fins. This one we call it 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 fins. Even the tail contain fins. All these fins enable the fish to, to, uh, to swim in the water. The lateral line is a sensitive organ which enables the fish to dictate vibration in its environment. If there is any vibration in the, around the, uh, the environment, the least, is this uh, lateral line that dictates it to them, that will tell them this environment, there is vibration. The anus helps in the ejection of waste products from its body. Then let's look at the tail, the last uh, segment is the tail. The tail is at the po uh, posterior end of the fish. That is the extreme end of the fish. That is where the uh, tail is located. It consists of the anal fin, the caudal pedicle, uh, pen and the caudal fin. The tail acts as a pedal that enables the fish to steer through the water. The paddle. Have you ever been to the stream? I've ever seen those people that are paddling canoe. What they use 
is just like the fin of a fish that enables it to uh, uh, swim in the water. Then classification of fish based on habitats. The fish can be classified based on their habitats. What we mean by habitat is a place where this fish dwells. It's the place where this fish lives. Even though we know that it lives in water. But there are two types of habitat we're going to consider here. We have fresh water habitats and the, uh, salt water or marine water habitats. Then we have a, let's consider them one after the other. Freshwater fishes are fishes that live in freshwater bodies like stream, rivers, lakes, swamps, and artificial ponds. These are the examples of freshwater bodies. If you look down here, you can see different variety of fish. You can see them here. This one, they are the fishes found in freshwater habitats. They live in freshwater habitats. The example includes uh, tilapia, catfish, calves, mudfish, etc. Now you can see here there are varieties of different fishes. Then we're going to look at the other habitats, salt or marine water fishes. Are fishes that live in salt or marine, marine water. They are usually big and have the ability to withstand the pressure of the habitat. Yes, that's where they live in that kind of environment because they have the ability to withstand the pressure of their environment. So also, the, uh, uh, these uh, uh, fish that are found in fresh water, they have small body that enables them to contend with the environment they find themselves. Then, the example of this uh, marine fish includes the dogfish, shark, mackerel, moonfish, croaker, etc. As you can see here, this is one of the examples of a salt water fish or marine water fish. There are some that are, you know, where rivers meet with a sea. It's called a breakage. It's called a breakage. There are some fish. Fishes that live in around that region too. One of them is a uh, crab or the, the half. Classification based on morphology. Classification based on morphology. When we're talking of morphology, we're talking of the body makeup of the fish. There are two classes of fish based on morphology. They are bony fish, bony fishes or and cartilaginous fishes, bony fishes and cartilaginous fishes. The bony fishes now. Bony fishes are fishes that have their skeleton made up of bones. If you see them, they have their skeleton made up of uh, what? Bones. Have you ever seen tilapia fish? You have been eating fish. It is called that as you are eating them, you see their skeleton are made up of bones. Those fish are called bony fish. They are called bony fish. From the word bone, they draft the name bony. So bony fish, they have their skeletons made up of bones. They have sharp teeth. They have sharp teeth. If you open their mouth, you see their teeth are sharp. They possess upper column or gill covered. As we have earlier discussed, you can see this place. They have all the all the uh, bony fish. They have upper column that covers the gills that are inside that they use for respiration and swim bladder. They have swim bladder that enables them to swim easily, which enables them to float in water. Many of them are freshwater fishes. While other dwells in salt water habitats. Only few of them that dwell in salt water habitats. But many of them are freshwater fishes. Example is tilapia, as we have seen here. Cat uh, Cartilaginous fish, fishes 
are fishes that have skeletons made up of cartilage. Their skeletons are made up of cartilage. They have fine, shiny, and elastic body that the body can be easily be moved. They are very, very elastic. They possess no opacolum, no swim bladder. They don't have opacolum. You cannot see them having the opacolum or swim bladder. Many of them belong to marine water fresh uh, fishes, while a few of them live in fresh water habitats. Examples are shark, ray, dogfish, and scats. From this diagram, what you are seeing here is a shark. You can see the teeth. They have uh, their teeth on the mouth there. You can see the, you cannot see the upper column that we are talking about that covers the gills. It's not shown because they don't have it. I bet they can live in water and swim using their tail to move them. But they don't have swim bladder. Then, after saying this, I have some assignment to give you that you work on it. Assignment one says, define the term fishery. Assignment two says, mention the fish that can be found in fresh water and salt or marine water. S stay safe and many thanks until I come your way next week. God bless you.